In the mid-1990s, I, as a US-based scholar of contemporary German and Austrian culture, had a big problem. I was living several thousands of miles away from the object of my research, and I had only very fleeting access to the current developments of the political and cultural scene there. So you can imagine that when the internet matured enough to give me live streaming of local radio broadcasts and today's newspapers at my fingertips, I was hooked. And I became, at that moment, a digital humanist. Humanists can now work with computer scientists to use and refine digital methods, like data mining or topic modeling, to pinpoint where our investigation of sources can most fruitfully begin. Humanists have access to tools, software and code, uh, which allows them to analyze, for example, large linguistic corpora. And the innovation in this is that this was just not possible a few years um, before. One of the big issues that uh, we, uh, confronts us is that we have different vocabularies. Different scholarly disciplines have very different academic practices, publication approaches. They have different excellence criteria. So how do you foster meaningful multidisciplinary research? We are engaging richly. As I like to think about it, we cross the cricket pitch all the time. We talk to each other to ensure that we understand what each other's research uh, agendas are what we're trying to achieve with our research and to ensure that as we produce research going forward, it's benefiting both disciplines and also generating new research disciplines. The Collaborative European Digital Archival Research Infrastructure, a big mouthful that we call Sendari for short. This is a project that was led instigated and is managed by Trinity College Dublin and which was funded with six and a half million euros to deliver by the European Commission. This project has mapped out how we publish and share knowledge, how we bring together diverse and sometimes hidden collections of historical value, and of course, how we sustain research outputs and projects beyond the term of their active development. The information in these cultural heritage collections should be available to everybody. You shouldn't be penalized in the pursuit of your research goals by your lack of knowledge. And we have a responsibility to do what we can to open these collections up to all interested parties, anyone who wants to engage with their roots, their heritage, their history. I'd like to tell a short story about how a 50 million euro research centre based here in Trinity called ADAPT has learned an awful lot from some 17th century manuscripts. We worked with noise, noisy historians. Historians are exceptionally passionate about their material and their material itself is also noisy. And this reflects very strongly on the challenges we have in content today. If you can understand noise and content, you can make it sensible, you can make context of that content, you can bring it into meaningful situations for individual users. So what we found is that through working with historians, we developed a new way of analyzing content that allowed us to explore, guide users across that material, support them in discovering interconnections in the material, and importantly, allow them to reflect on that material, see what they were doing themselves across it. Through that reflection, they could better understand it. And what we've established through this new methodology, this new approach, is not just a way of analyzing 17th century text, but a way of understanding incoming notifications on mobile phones, because it's the same kind of challenge noise hitting us all the time. Sometimes when it's not appropriate, if my phone started to ring now, it definitely wouldn't be appropriate. But we need to get control of that material. And through working with historians, we understood how to continuously hypothesize, how continuously evolve an understanding of a material, because that's what we're doing with these incoming notifications. We're evolving a new understanding of what that material is. Uniquely amongst the many institutions who are beginning to offer programs and to carry out research in this area, we've succeeded in developing very close working relationships between humanities researchers with their interesting, stimulating, noisy data sources and their ageless questions, and computer scientists who, in this encounter, have been more than just service providers or, or code monkeys, uh, and have instead been uh, co-researchers joint discoverers who have gained as much from the encounter and learned as much from the encounter as we uh, humanities researchers do. So I'm one of the people whom Mark would never dream of calling a code monkey. Um, <laughs> I'm an assistant professor in the School of Computer Science and I've worked quite, quite closely with a, a lot of the humanities researchers that we have here today. The technology that we develop in my field um, always has, or at least always should, have the, the person in mind, the end user, the person who's going to be using that technology. If it doesn't make their lives better or easier, then it's absolutely useless to develop. The humanities researchers that we engage with give us those real challenges, those real problems that they face. They need to search, engage with, explore content collections. They need to extract and understand the knowledge contained within those collections. And
and the technology that we developed aims to help them to do exactly that. Technologists need the humanities. The humanities need technologists. We're not getting away from each other. And it really can be a mutually beneficial reciprocal relationship. Digital humanities is not just interdisciplinary, it's inherently translational. It reaches out beyond the library and beyond the laboratory to bring research communities together and to contextualize the artifacts of human existence for a digital age. It ensures that we embed our understanding of what it means to be human in the very technology that now suffuses our existence. In doing so, Digital humanities unlocks new pathways to innovative thinking, not just for the humanities, not just even for the universities, but really for all of us.